This video will provide you an example of how to carry out a correlational analysis using JASP. This video corresponds with the how-to example provided in Chapter 10 of our text, Applied Data Analysis in Psychology, Exploring Diversity with Statistics. The data set we're going to use for this exercise is based in the area of cultural psychology, where cultural psychologists look to describe and understand how cultural norms and values uh, both impact us and impact our behavior. The study that we're going to focus on looked at how cultural values related to the spread of COVID-19. This study correlated individualism scores, which is how much people tend to value individuals over groups, and it correlated those scores with both number of COVID-19 cases and COVID-19 related deaths in a sample of several different countries. We're going to replicate some of the correlations that they computed in this study for our exercise. We're specifically going to test two hypotheses. So the first hypothesis is that individualism will be related to COVID-19 cases. And so our null hypothesis would be that individualism is unrelated to the number of COVID-19 cases or the correlation is close to zero. And the alternative is that individualism will be correlated with number of COVID cases. So there is a relationship. The second set we're going to look at is just with a different theoretical outcome variable. We'll look to see if individualism is correlated with the number of COVID-19 deaths in that particular country, with the null being that there is no relationship and the alternative being that there is a relationship. As we walk through this example, you're going to learn skills for how to check assumptions of a correlation analysis using descriptive statistics, as well as some data visualizations like box plots and scatter plots. We're going to conduct the actual correlation analysis and interpret Pearson's R as well as Spearman's Rho. And we're going to interpret that output to form conclusions about the relationships between variables. This is the data that we're going to use. It's titled Example Country Level Data and COVID. This is the JAS file, so once you have it open and ready to follow along, we can go ahead and get started. Some of the first assumptions we always want to check when we're running a correlational analysis is that our variables are the right type for the analysis. In this case, we're going to be using the individualism collectivism scores, which are continuous variables measured on a numerical scale. And we're also going to use the variables of corona deaths per 1 million in the population and corona cases per 1 million in the population. So we'll have all of our variables that are continuous numerical variables and not categorical. So that meets that assumption. The next thing we want to know is that our variables are roughly normally distributed. And so we find that by going to our descriptives menu and computing some descriptive statistics for those three variables. So I will move over with my gray arrow, individualism, collectivism, corona deaths, and corona cases. When checking for normality, the things that we usually look at are under the statistics menu, where we'll make sure we've checked skewness and kurtosis. This will help us know if our variable is roughly normally distributed. If we look at our output, we can see here that skewness values are within the normal range for individualis individualism. It is a little outside of the normal range for corona deaths and corona cases, so we have a little bit of a positive skew for these variables. We notice that for kurtosis, it's in the normal range again for individualism. It doesn't extend beyond uh, plus or minus two, but the kurtosis values are a little high for corona deaths and corona cases. So this means we have some potential violations to our assumptions here, and we may have to make some adjustments. We can also see this visually while we check our next assumption of looking for outliers by creating distribution plots for our variables and box plots. Distribution plots, if you remember, are just histograms, and the box plots are going to show if we do have any outliers within our data. So as we expected, individualism collectivism is almost normally distributed. It might have some non-normality, but it generally meets our criteria and these variables for corona deaths that had high scores for 
um, skewness and kurtosis in corona cases. You can see are visually also positively skewed with a lot more cases in the low areas, but some countries that had very, very high reports of both cases and deaths. In our box plot, we see that we do not have any outliers for individualism and collectivism. However, we do have some outliers for corona deaths and for corona cases. You'll see the dots outside of the lines that indicate these outliers exist. So what do we do with this? Two of our three variables are skewed, have some positive kurtosis, and a decent amount of outliers. Well, thankfully, our correlation can be adjusted in order to run one that doesn't have as much impact from skew and outliers. So the traditional correlation that we run is called a Pearson's correlation, but there's also another option called Spearman's row. And Spearman's is gonna be more appropriate for our data because it runs the analysis based on a case's ranking in the data rather than their raw value. So instead of some of these outliers being a very big number, it's just gonna be the highest rank score in our data. So it tends to adjust for issues with non-normality. So we will have an option to do, there are other things that you can do if you transform your data, for instance, you can do um, data transformations, and there's some examples of this in our data. You'll see there's some values created that come up at the end of our data set. Some researchers will square root or log a variable in order to get rid of non-normality in, non in the data. And you can see if we compared, for instance, the corona deaths with the normal version, the square root version, and the log version, oh, those were cases. I'll put deaths here with the square root version and the log version. We can look and see that these types of data transformations can help to fix our problems with skewness and kurtosis. So I'll go back and um, add in for statistics, skewness and kurtosis, and we can look at on plots, those distribution plots as well. And when we compare these three transformed versions, we see again, deaths in our regular version had issues with skewness and kurtosis, but if we square rooted those values, it gets within our normal range for skewness, not quite for kurtosis. And if we did the log, which is a more dramatic transformation, it does fix the problem and it's within our normal ranges. So you can see that the raw corona deaths, again, positively skewed, Square root evens out a little bit, not as dramatically skewed. And if you do a log transformation, it completely fixes it. So those would be our options. We could run correlations using the log version of this variable, or we can simply use Spearman's correlation that adjusts for our issues with normality. That was a lot of information for normality that we can use. And our next assumption is gonna be linearity. Is the relationship roughly linear. So does it follow roughly a line? And so we can do that. I'm going to go back to my original descriptives menu here where I had individualism, corona deaths, and corona cases. And with those three variables under plots, I'm going to select the option for a scatter plot. And with that plot, I'm going to put no extra graphs above or to the right of the plot just to keep it a little bit more user friendly to look at. And I'm going to ask for a linear regression line. I'll extend my output menu back over and we'll be able to see all the previous graphs we looked at and scatter plots will be added to the end. And what we're interested in really is individualism related to these two outcomes of COVID deaths and COVID cases. So we're going to focus on these two scatter plots here because it does every possible combination. There's also a plot here of the number of cases and deaths in relation to one another, which we would expect are correlated. The more cases you have, the more deaths that would occur. For our main plots, we want to see, does this follow roughly a line pattern? We do see that we have some data clustered in general areas, and we have some cases that extend out beyond the rest, some data points that aren't in line with the rest. But overall, if we try to summarize this relationship, 
we can generally see that it does follow a line pattern. It doesn't follow, for instance, a pattern where it increases and then decreases. So we would say we can go ahead and run this test because it seems to be roughly linear. So we will go ahead and say that the assumption is okay. And that completes the main assumption checks that we do for a correlation, making sure we have continuous variables, looking at normality, checking for outliers, and looking at scatter plots to see if their relationship is linear enough to go ahead and proceed and not obviously nonlinear. So now we're ready for the primary analyses. So going back to our main menu here, in order to run a correlation, we're actually gonna click on the regression menu. This is the family of relationship test. And we're going to go under classical and just select correlation. We're gonna move over the variables involved in each of our analyses. So we are looking at the relationship between individualism and number of corona deaths. We're also interested in individualism related to corona cases. So I'm gonna move all three variables over at once and I'm gonna be able to get information on all of those relationships with just one image. Taking a look at some of our extra options that we may want to see here, we're going to request that it flags significant correlations. That just makes it a little bit easier to recognize correlations that are significant. We can request confidence intervals that will give us a range of likely correlation values versus just one point estimate. We can also request the sample size be reported so we know how many cases were available to calculate each of our correlations. Because we did have a violation of our assumption, we're going to have it calculate both our Pearson's R value and Spearman's row. So Pearson's R is the default that we use if we meet all of our assumptions for a correlation analysis. Spearman's row is an adjusted version of that correlation if you do have issues with normality or if you have outliers. Those are weighed less when you compute Spearman's row versus Pearson's R. We'll include both of them because the original study that this data is from did use Pearson's R, so we'll replicate their results, but we'll also add Spearman's row to adjust for some of those normality issues. Other things you can do are to change the hypothesis. We're expecting them to be correlated, but this is a two-tailed test when it just says correlated versus specifying a direction, so we'll leave it that way. And you could add a plot here if you wanted to. We already created our plot, so I'm just gonna leave that blank for now. So now we can look at our output a little bit closer. Here we're gonna have a lot of information. You'll see a correlation table is arranged as a matrix. We have each variable listed in a row, and then it will be repeated in the column. So for instance, this first set of numbers, which is blank, would have been the relationship between individualism and individualism. That's not very interesting to see how a variable relates to itself, so we don't see values there. The next set we'll see is corona deaths related to individualism collectivism. So because this is the individualism column and the corona deaths row, that's the relationship that we're looking at. We'll walk through each piece of this output where we see that our N, our sample size is 69 countries that were included in this analysis. Our Pearson's R value is 0.48 and it is significant. So that means that there is a pretty moderate relationship between collectivism or individualism and corona deaths. And it is positive, meaning that the more individualistic a country is, the more corona deaths that they reported. You see this upper and lower value for a confidence interval, and that just gives us a range of likely values for the correlation. So if we were to resample over and over and do the study again, accounting for error that we might have in our estimates, we'd expect the correlation between individualism and COVID deaths to be anywhere between 0.27 and 0.64. That range is somewhat wide, but all of those correlations are pretty moderate to large, and so we do see that there seems to be a fairly consistent and moderate relationship between these variables. Now the next section of output you'll see is where we requested the additional Spearman's row data. And so Spearman's row is adjusted for those outliers and the skewness of the data, so it's gonna be less influenced by those extra cases that maybe had extreme values. And this time the correlation is actually a little bit higher. It's 0.58 and 
are 0.589, and the range of likely values for that Spearman's row are 0.72 to 0 0.40. So those are all moderate to high correlations that we would expect for the relationship between individualism and corona deaths. Our second hypothesis was that individualism relates to corona cases, the number of cases reported, and that will be reported here in the column for individualism and the row for corona cases will display that relationship. Again, there were 69 countries represented. Pearson's correlation was around 0.49, and the confidence interval around that would mean that our correlation in the true population, if we were to complete the study over and over again and know the true value, it would be somewhere between 0.29 and 0.65. Our Spearman's row estimate, again, is a little bit stronger when we account for the influence of our skewed data or the outliers. It's 0.595 and the confidence interval is between 0.418 and 0.729. So in sum, the main pieces of data that we would interpret or that we would tend to interpret and to report are our correlation values. Because this was data where we had some issues with non-normality with our corona deaths and our corona cases score, I would focus on reporting our Spearman's row value for each of those. So we would say that individualism was positively correlated with corona deaths, and we would report the correlation or the Spearman's row value of 0.59 if we rounded two decimal places and indicate that it was significant. And we would say that individualism is positively correlated with corona case counts as well, with Spearman's row being 0 0.60 if we round up. Your textbook will show you examples of how to interpret and write up both Pearson's R and Spearman's Rho, but they generally lead us to the same conclusion. And that conclusion is that these variables are correlated, and if we look at the effect size, we know that our criteria for a strong relationship would be an R value of 0.5, and so both of these Spearman values do rise above that criteria, so we would say it's a significant relationship and it's a strong relationship. If we wanted to also express these relation relationships in terms of explained variance, you can square correlation values in order to interpret it. For instance, if we were focusing on Pearson's R value here of 0.48, if you square 0.48, it gives you 0.23, which means 23% of the variance in COVID deaths can be explained by the relationship with individualism. If we squared this 0.49, we would get 0.24, so 24% of the variance in number of cases could be explained by individualism. For a full example of a write-up, you can refer to your textbook to the putting it all together section, but this gives you the main steps for running a correlation both with Pearson's R and Spearman's Rho for when you run into issues with non-normal data.